turn off your view account and stream as if you have hundreds of viewers. That's a good idea, actually. From now on, I'm going to turn off viewers and follower accounts. I'm never going to have that on. Please follow me on Twitter, for the love of God. I don't have enough followers, and I need more, because bigger number equal better person. I'm only okay person. I want to be great person. Great person, one million. One million, big person. Big person, better person. And it had hundreds of thousands of likes. Man, this guy wants to be Mr. Beast so bad. I think people like the idea of being a streamer or YouTuber or content creator really in any fashion because, well, uh, let's just be frank, it allows you to play video games for a living, make your own hours, and potentially make buku bucks. I don't like content creators like this. Content creators who, if there was no money involved, they would not do it. I don't like content creators like that. It's like people always have this, this is all over like Instagram and all this stuff. Oh. Work hard now when you're young so that way you don't have to work in the future and you could live off these, like, you know, YouTube passive income, all this stuff. It's like, no, I want to work hard now so I can work even harder in the future. So that way I can set myself up to work even harder. Because I don't care about living a cushy life and all that. I want to create something. So it's all, all of his reasons that he can give for wanting to do YouTube will never involve wanting to take on more work than you would take in, like, a normal job or whatever but no normal jobs are too easy for me i don't want them i want to create content because i want to do even better i want to work even harder yes i want to be streamer well think about it a little bit deeper don't just think do you want think why do you want i've already thought about this quite a bit i definitely have thought about it a lot more than ludwig that's for sure when you're actually going to start if you've already okay monday july 31st 2023 that's when I'll start streaming consistently every day. I want to talk about the greatest heist of all time. A heist so clean. A heist that's no risk and all reward. A heist that requires no work at all. The heist. You know, I, I'm about to... I know what he's going to do. I know what he's going to say. It's about like all the like reaction content stuff. I think I'm going to do the same thing that I did for, for Dark Viper AU. I think I'm literally just about to upload this whole thing. Like, this part of the video, I'm not going to cut it. I'm not going to, you know, chop it up, do my own little transformative. I'm just about to steal this video, this video right here. I'm going to steal this particular one. Because I think, like, all these reaction channels would love to, you know, react to stuff like this. But I, they wouldn't dare, you know? They wouldn't dare. They don't want to pick a fight. They don't want to poke the hornet's nest. I don't care so much about showing reactions like in their entirety for other videos but it's like these i don't know i just get a kick out of it the other ones i'll actually be transformative but these i'll, I'll just watch all the way through and, and post it on here so that way you don't have to watch the original and i get all the views and they get nothing of of my own youtube video a few days ago that it's happening again right now target of this heist was out there in the open right for the taken and by that i mean I decided to upload a YouTube video. It was a 30 that. minute long video have. essay that I made entirely from scratch. I made every single little element of it. And it took me about three weeks in total without any sort of breaks whatsoever. Yeah, at yeah, a yeah. deadline we know, we know how much work to reach so this. to end but you know, it was fine because I ended up making something that I was actually proud of. That video felt like the best video I've ever made. Two days well, this is about to be the best video I've ever made, because it's your entire video, plus a tiny little extra bit of me. Days ago, I woke up to a lot of notifications on my phone. A lot of people letting me know that Hasana B, a really famous streamer, one of the worst streamers of all time, decided to react to my video, the one that I worked so much on, live on stream. And honestly, I found that to be really exciting. I personally watch Hassan's streams every now and again, so it was cool from that aspect. Oh. You watch Hassan's streams? I lost all sympathy for you just now. Damn. As expected from Hassan. Naturally. The best content creator. He's gonna do... He's just gonna one-up you. He's like that guy from, um... What's it called? Shokugeki no Soma. Food Wars. Who, who uh... Who, like... He'll do all the research on you, so that when it's time to do the battle, whatever you make, he'll make it. The same exact thing, but just with slight improvements. And he won't do any of his own original work or anything like that. That's Hassan. Hassan is not an original creator, nor is he an original thinker. He's just... All of his thoughts and opinions are literally just fed into him. The whole thing was posted on a channel that is not owned by Hassan in any way. It was posted by this... this 
Well, nothing's really owned by Hassan. It's owned by the masses, really. Everyone, everyone, um, what's the quote? It's like, you know, I'm not really involved in this kind of stuff. It's like, uh, to each, I don't know what it is, but it's like everyone provides the resources that they can. They, they take the resources that they need. This is not your video, bro. You should know that. If you watch Hassan, you enjoy watching Hassan, you should not be making this video. Steal. This is, this is not your video. This is our video. Shadowy, mysterious figure. A shadowy, mysterious figure that decided to completely... Uh, okay, so he does watch us on, I guess, because, you know, he's gonna blame the problem on some shadowy, mysterious figure rather than realizing that really, we are all the shadowy, mysterious figure. We all get we deserve to own this video. I am actually, ext like, a super liberal person, but Hassan is not liberal. He's just stupid and just hopping on trends. The whole purpose of the way that this is formatted is to trick someone going yeah. through YouTube that Hassan decided to talk about how to radicalize a celebrity. Yeah. Please ignore this less famous. Yeah, um, that's not a... I don't think that's a good qualm to have. That they formatted the, the thumbnail to be like that. Because the thumbnail is is actually an accurate representation of what's happen happening here. Uh, on a, 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 a channel that is Hassan's, whether you want to call it that or not, um, or whether it's owned by someone associated with Hassan or not, is actually kind of irrelevant. It is promoting his brand. The channel name has Hassan in it. In, in concept, forget copyright, forget the law, forget all that stuff. Art and in legacy and all that stuff. This is Hassan's video. And what you're getting from like this thumbnail is an accurate representation of what's happening in the video. You're, you don't even matter anymore when, when he steals your video. Well, that matters. The reason I was a lot more fine with Hassan's reaction to my video on its own is that you click on Hassan's stream to watch Hassan. You don't click on it. What? That's a stupid reason. Hassan is not based. He is based, but he's based on other people. You click on Hassan's stream because you know he's probably watching some other content, that's so some original content that somebody else made that's better than him. Or if you're looking for Hassan's views. I mean, like, if you have a brain, you'd realize that all of Hassan's views come from other people. He's not a real thinker. He's just repeating back, regurgitating back what's fed to him, you know? So it's like, you're not really, like, this is not a real person. It's not a real person right here. You're just a vessel. He's wrong about that. You click on Hassan's stream. You're not clicking on Hassan's stream. You're clicking on a compilation of a bunch of other people's streams. He's just a curator. And that's why, that's also why Hassan fans are like really stupid. If someone compliments you over the phone, right? And you go, wow, thank you Verizon or AT&T. That's kind of what it's like when you say, oh my God, Hassan, man, Hassan's such a great, like that, that's kind of what you're doing, you know? And then there's an element of projection there, which you can actually go further into. All these people that criticize religious people. Oh, why would you thank God when something good happens? Thank the person that made it happen. Um, but that's also just an element of projection. And I can get into that on a different stream too, because that's actually an important topic. Me can spend 200 hours on a video, and then some other third party, not the person who made the video, not the one- Whoa, 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 whoa. How could you possibly complain about putting in a lot of work and someone using your work and not giving you your, your dues, right? 200 hours. It takes you 200 hours to, to mine some ore, or farm some crop, and, and people just take it and they eat it in an instance. That's not their problem or your problem. Your labor belongs to the masses. Care if this is a fan channel or not at all. This is a business, a pretty big one at that. Right, right, right. You know, if he wasn't making money off of it, then it'd be totally fine. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that really matters is pointing the finger at people who make money and saying you don't deserve to make money that's that's really the whole game here except for when we make money then it's okay then it's okay but yeah forget the fact that like you know, if he was uploading it and he took all your views and and he you know used that attention to grow his channel and to do all these other things but he didn't the video wasn't monetized it would be totally okay. It would be a-okay. But if you made more money than you, ooh, no, 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 we can't allow that. We got to look at their bowls and see how much they have in it. It's that one quote that's like, the only time you should ever look at someone else's bowl is to make sure they have enough. Nope, nope, don't listen to that quote. That's a terrible quote. You should always look at other people's bowls to make sure you, to make sure they don't have more than you. And if they have more than you, then you should 
point the finger at them and go, ah, they're what's wrong with the world. This is a great strategy, honestly, to like steal videos. It's, it's you know, unethical. It's Hassan level ethical. I mean, but yeah, it's, it's a real insane growth strategy. Damn, bro, why is his eyes? Looks like he's consuming that spice, bro. At my points and- Wait, he's not using pageless. You know how much easier that would make it for you, bro? Because you don't have to um, deal with the margins, first of all. And second of all, if you're placing pictures, right? You don't have to, you know, if a picture's big, it won't cut off. But you should consider using, you just file page setup and then page list. And you can set this to default. So every single time I make a new, um, what's it called, document, it's always page list now. And it's so much better. King effort, easy content, and it is obscenely profitable if you can generate a bunch of views on content that takes almost literally no time. At this point, you're kind of stupid not to have a React channel. Amazing and wonderful, or spending 200 hours watching the- It's funny because that last guy literally said he, he spent 200 hours making that video. It's misunderstandings of fair use and how it applies to reaction content, which line is- I don't think the fair use argument even matters anymore here. I don't think the legal argument is- because very few, there's so much largesse exercised here that it's like nobody wants to go through these legal battles. I think the, the real argument to be made is a moral argument. Fair use is kind of irrelevant, in my opinion, in this particular, not even in this particular case, in like this whole reaction scene. Especially because it was almost the entire original. Right, right, right. H3, H3 won because they were criticizing. They're, they're, when the judge gave them back their notes, the, the judge said repeatedly over and over and over again that like when you're critical of a work like this, it gets that leeway. Criticisms in particular are given a lot of like a anti-anti-slap. And although judges might like to consider, they might like to be like, oh, I'm so objective. I'm so, no, everyone, we are human beings. We are emotional. We should stop trying to pretend like we're, we're not emotional. Literally the harshest sentences on average are given just before lunch and the lightest sentences are given just after lunch. Judges are not objective. They are emotional. And if you can convince a judge or a jury that the person who is suing you is not suing you because what you're doing is uh, harmful to them in, in a reasonable, reasonable way that should be removed, but rather that they're just trying to silence your criticism, even if it's actually not fair use or it doesn't follow the same guidelines, even to like a reasonable degree, criticism in particular is one of those things that um, it's probably the mo it, it's probably going to be given the most leeway in situations like in court situations for fair use. I don't think a general commentary would be given the same level of leeway as a criticism would be, or, or like a definitely not a compilation. I don't think educational content would be given the same sort of leeway as well. Um, I think criticisms are even stronger for defending fair use. I think educational content is a real loophole to upload whatever the hell you want to YouTube, but in a court of law, I don't think it holds up nearly as well as criticisms. And that's, uh, what's it called? Um, they went in, like, Ethan from H3H3 and uh, Ela, they all, they went into that court case with the, with the point, like, the, in the forefront that this is a critical video. Back in 2016, there was a huge outcry against reaction content from the largest creators at the time. Since then, what has happened is the unethical people who are willing to weather that criticism and just stick it out and continue to upload reaction videos for years and years on end. These are the new people at the top of the totem pole. And some people themselves who once just made original content have looked at this and gone, Damn. wow, I should be doing that as well. In some language markets, the literal biggest creators are reactors. And it is these people who are influencing the minds of the viewers, feeding the audience and even other creators lies about the benefits of reaction content, feeding them with falsehoods about fair use that the viewers aren't gonna bother going looking up to see if they're correct. Actual goal of the content needs to be to uplift the original creator. Linus didn't wake up recently and say to himself, I need to find some way to get exposure to other creators. The decision to make a reaction channel wasn't done with the goal of benefiting other creators. It was done because he ran out of tech tips. I said it once before, bro. I said, hey, the world ends the day Linus runs out of tech tips. I wasn't wrong. More attention away from- Right, it's, it's a brutal, it's a brutal economy. Everything else to its- It's not necessarily that it's any different from any other kinds of industries. It's just that, um, 
it's always operating at 100% capacity. If everyone was always consuming as as much as much as much clothes as they could possibly handle, which is, I mean, no, people are not like wearing a new thing every five minutes that they've never worn before and they will never wear again after that. You can convince people who buy one pants or whatever, like a t-shirt once a week to buy it once every three days. You can expand the market like that. It's not operating at peak capacity. If it was, if people were spending all their money on clothes, then the only way to grow in the market is to claw away at other parts of the market share, at other companies who have market share, you know? And that's what's happening in the attention economy. It's unlike the money economy because it's people are always giving 100% of their attention to things that demand their attention. And the only way to court attention now is to claw away at the other attention from other people. We've done a few of these on the main channel, like reacting to community submissions, like best and worst builds and stuff like that. I want to do LTT reacts to like bad hacking scenes in movies. Uh, we want to do- mm, That's cool, that's cool, that's a good idea. Reacting to like bad product listings. So like going through like, uh, you know, Facebook Marketplace. You know, I really love what Corridor Crew does where they will- I knew, I, I, I literally had that same vibe in my head. That, that they're doing this because of all like the, they, the Corridor Crew literally made a video on the bad hacking scenes in movies. Fair use and making sure that regardless of who it is and whether they could afford to take us to court over it, making sure that we- My solution to this kind of thing is if I wanted to do reaction videos, look right now I would just abuse the system and um, I, I have no, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a psychopath, bro. I, w I would abuse the system totally right now and uh, just bank on the fact that like smaller creators will not want to spend the money to sue me. And if I have to take a few, you know, like, um, you know, copyright claims and things like that to deal with it, then I'll totally do that. But if I have literally just a thousand, if I'm monetized, yeah, the only way I'm, I'm reacting to stuff is, well, I wouldn't say the only way, but maybe in 99% of cases that I'd ever react to anything if I'm monetized is if I have permission from the creator. Maybe there's some exceptions. I can't think of any at the moment, but there might be some exce exceptions. I don't want to rule it out. We're actually trying them. I'm not eating a box of noodles while I watch other people's content. Arguments related to... So he knows. He's seen the streams. It's very rare for anyone to... Bro, why did Burstimo or whatever, why did they unlist so many of their videos? All their videos from when they were coming up, from when they had, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 subscribers, all the way up until like 25,000 or so. They were all like great videos, all like stuff that, that that made them come up from nothing. And and now they're all privated or unlisted. I just don't get it. Moon forms. All of this, all, all of this. He's gonna hit no, he's gonna hit no. Yeah, I know, the same thing. I know, I know what he's going to talk about. I've scrapped so many video ideas, dude. I was literally, I took a walk earlier today. I was literally just thinking about this video idea that I scrapped. I had all the footage and I was like, man, it's taking way too long to edit. It's not turning out interesting. And then I'm, I'm looking back. I'm like, man, I wish I had that footage. I deleted it all when I wiped out my Google photos. Um, it was this like rabbit hole YouTuber tier list, which is like the, it's the perfect combination of tier list iceberg and video essay all combined in one and no one's done it uh, all those kinds of people that were like you know top dogs of that little era right of like people just like letting these videos play in the background right before all the the rise and fall videos popped off man i really feel like i should have made that video so many videos i scrapped man because i didn't think it was good enough so many videos. I have a Word document where I write out every small idea I have for Me a video. Too. There too. are over a hundred ideas in it. None of them are- That's it. I have like 18,000, I think. The of this document is that most of these ideas will never turn into a video. I mean, yeah. It does happen occasionally. That's why I have a series on YouTube called Free Ideas, where I give away my ideas. Because even with unlimited money and unlimited time, I mean, not unlimited time, but unlimited money and my entire lifetime, I still could not do all these ideas. 45? I got to be there at 9. And 9.30. Oh my God, they tried to hit me with the rapper time? <laughs> Damn. I know exactly what he's talking about here. I'm, I'm also always first to video shoots because there's that saying, there's that saying, it's um, 
if you're first, you're on time. No, no, no. If, you're first, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. If you're late, you're fired. And there would be, there'd literally be times where like people would be like, it was almost embarrassing how early I was. Like it would be in a group chat of like 20 people that are all supposed to be at the video shoot. And I'd show up and they'd be like, but you're like 30 minutes early. And they'd all be there like, oh, we're all going to be here like 30 minutes late. I, I like, I literally, I felt like kind of embarrassed. But then when everyone would show up, I would be the top dog. And they'd be like, yo, here, uh, what do you think about this? Or, uh, you know, we had to move from this location to this location. Oh, let me let me park in that spot. I'd get the best parking spot. Oh, we got to uh, set up this thing over here. Oh, let's, let's take the cars. Okay, uh, hey, rapper who brought the Rolls Royce or whatever. Let me just ride with you. I'm in the car with the main guy or whatever, the main videographer, main rapper, whoever, right? I, I usually take like a top spot literally because of it. There's great value to showing up early. Even if you're like really early to the point where you feel like you've wasted your time, it's really hardly a waste of time to show up early to video shoots, but it's always a waste of time to show up late. But I'm telling you, nobody makes videos like this guy. This guy, GX Ace, see this? Literally, I'm about to, I've seen like a couple of things that he had, but I'm about to go back into this. Like every single, he makes the best camera videos on YouTube by far. And like, it's really telling that like the camera videos he makes is not on the same, oh, here's the new Sony mirrorless, like, for the you know 500th mirrorless they made in the past couple years, nah, he's making videos on like actual real creative cameras for creative people. It, it really shows in his videos. Like he's really creative with everything he does in his videos too. Beautiful dude. image, having a fix. And I don't even watch like videos on like cameras. But god damn, dude, I'm subscribed. This is the Leica Q3. Oh my god, dude, I miss this guy's videos, man. I miss this guy's videos so much. A girl comes up, she decides to back that ass up on you. She turns around, starts to make it twerk and all that. She starts to go in, right? This fucking banana in your pants. She backs it up a little too hard. Damn, banana bust! That's not just busting on you, but it's busting on the female that got <laughs> their ass up on you. She banana bus. Banana bus. OGs know that. OGs know. I mean, it's not even that. It's not even that old. But early GTA Five, Wildcat and Vanoss and them, delirious back in those days. Do 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 banana bus. He walks away, turns around, she sees a <laughs> wet spot. I miss these edits, bro. Nobody edits like this anymore. It's simple, like less is more editing. Involve invested followers than a million with 10,000. Who am I, Cinnamon Toast Ken? Like, nigga, uh, Cinnamon Toast <laughs> Ken is a cool guy too. But you know, trust. My viewers trust me to tell my honest opinion. And if I betray that ever, I will lose everything as a YouTuber. All of my interaction with my niggas is established through me knowing, them knowing, that they will be honest with me, no matter what. What a, what a weird, weird, like, situation. What a weird time. It feels like such a different world now. It feels like everything is inauthentic now. There used to be so many creators that were genuinely authentic about the things that they would say and what they do, you know? It's not even a dying breed, it's dead. If you're gonna go to sleep soon, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, I forgot there's some bitch niggas in here. Y'all wanna go to sleep? <laughs> Here, here. Oh man, nobody had energy like Etika. Nobody. I don't. I don't praise too many people. Everyone always wants to dick ride all. What, anybody that's dead, really. Anybody that's dead. Like when when like Lil Peep died, every, a million people were like, "Oh, rest in peace, goat." It's influential. What? Are you delusional, goats? Or when Juice World died. Like the, I remember the next day, I saw a tweet. It was from some, of course it was some white girl, right? Juice World had one of the greatest and most influential albums of the year. Or maybe she said, I think she said year. I think she said, and it was not even like, the year was not even completed. And, and like, and it was the day after he died. It's one thing to go like, oh man, that sucks. Uh, it's, it's a tragedy when someone dies that young, right? But if you weren't going to say that, if you weren't going to tweet that, the day before he died then don't tweet it the day after he died. So don't act like 
people don't know what you're doing. Don't like, let's cut the bullshit here, okay? Because you didn't tweet that the day before. It shouldn't make no difference, right? If you're talking about good rap albums, oh, who had the best rap album? Who had the best album, best music, or whatever? Someone dying should not make a difference in the music that they made. Like, be real for one second. She wanted clout. She did not say that because she actually liked it. If she liked the music, she would have said that before he died. But she didn't. And that's the thing. I'll never, I'm going to be authentic and I'll never give additional unearned praise to someone after they die, literally just for the sole reason that they died. Oh, they died. It's so tragic. How can you view that as tragic? That's a part of life. Everyone will die. Okay, let's go through that. Let's all mourn and go like, oh my God, it's so tragic. Everyone's going to die. Imagine that they're dead. Imagine that you're, you're, the artist that you're thinking of right now is dead. What would you say about them? Say that now. Say that when they're alive. I don't, I don't pull my punches with anyone. Death is just a part of life, okay? And if you're dead, then you're not making any more content. So there's no reason to go, oh, this is the greatest. No, there's, there's nothing more to look forward to after that. And people should treat me the same way. People should stop having such a fucking being so narcissistic of like oh my god i deserve my my entire legacy deserves to live on forever like bro w learn to let go when it's your time to go it's your time to go stop being so afraid of death and stop projecting assuming that everyone else is also afraid of death and that you should put on this front a as if as if to go like oh no let me respect these people after they die even though it's clearly fake just so that you can put on a a a an example that people should respect you after you die. They shouldn't. Ask anyone I know. I don't discriminate. I don't try to project in this way. So when I say that Etika was, when I say that he was the most entertaining streamer of all time, if not like top three, right? But I'm gonna go ahead and just say it straight up. Etika was the most entertaining streamer ever. I've been saying that for years. I was saying it before he died. I, I said it when he died and nobody knew he was dead. And I'm still saying it today. And he's literally the reason I'm streaming right now. Rest in peace to Desmond Amofa, man. The joy you brought to this world was more than more than most people could ever even imagine that they would ever dream to bring in, in a lifetime. And you brought that in just 10 short years of streaming. I forgot there's some bitch niggas in here. That's right. No bitch niggas, no snitch niggas, no twitch niggas, and no fake switch niggas. Like, this is the kind of shit that really inspires me. All these other creators, oh, you, if you want to make it on Twitch, you need to set up your OBS in this way. Nah, dude. Like, I, I, I went down that path of, of treating content creation like a business, and I learned from it. I walked through the fires, and I learned from it. Clearly, these other streamers have not learned. You actually do need to be passionate about this unless you want it to fuck up your life. I have every intention to be passionate about it, but if I want to make it a career and I want to do it like and, and focus entirely on it, I have to also make money from it. And so that's exactly what I plan on doing. You guys ever seen that clip that was uh, this clip that's like blowing up all over TikTok and Instagram or whatever? Then what's the most valuable thing I could do? Here's something that could be helpful to people. In order to remember something, you must assign a meaning to why it's relevant. And if you can say why something is relevant, people will remember. Your brain is basically constantly trying to forget everything as much as possible. Right, right. And people don't realize that. Your brain loves to forget. It really, really wants to forget. And that is, it's a skill to remember and it's also a skill to forget. And when you're deciding what you want to min-max your life on, right? I want to have this skill, I want to do this, get really good at this thing and abandon everything else. You should consider is this one of the things that you want to min or max? Most of the stuff that we see in here is like not worth remembering. So in order for your brain to remember something, you have to establish relevance. You have to say why. This is actually secretly a reason why a lot of people stream and they don't even realize that they stream. Because they forget things and they don't want, they want to be able to minimize that skill as much as possible, but still have it be useful. It's crazy because I have a, I, I made this stream of consciousness that was like, um, if dreams have meaning, please tell me what this means or something like that. And somehow I still remember um, and that, it might have been that video, it might have been a different one, but I talk about like why I make content in the first place. It's so that I can forget. And that's what I, I'm going through these things so I can put them out there and forget them. So I can condition my brain that the things I stream I can forget, I don't need to remember, and I can open up space in my brain to learn new things. Because that's that's been my experience this whole time. It's been the more and more I remember, the more I store in my brain, uh, you know, random useless facts or whatever, the less I'm able to learn. And the less enjoyment I have, the less immersed I get in other things. 
So it's like, I don't want to assign relevance to these things. I want to forget. I want to, like, I'm literally actively trying to forget. And I've gotten pretty damn good at it, actually. I'm, I'm really bad at it for, like, a, you know, relative to, like, a machine that could just delete data. But uh, I've gotten way better at it than most people I know. I mean, everyone that I know, that, as far as I know of, there's some occasions where if I'm feeling it, I can literally deliberately forget things. Like, I can say, there's a thing in my head. This is the thing. I want to forget it. I forget it and I never remember it again. Because this to me is like, this is like life, you know? My style of filmmaking has always been fishing, which is just, if you don't know what fishing is, I don't even know if this is like a proper term. I heard it in school. It's basically, you know how you fish, you, you cast a line and you just hope something sticks. Fishing is just recording everything all the time and you don't even stop. And the real effort, the reeling it in, is not like, it's not like spear fishing where you go in and you specifically deliberately try to wait for the right moment to capture. No, you just wait, and the moment you catch, catch something, the moment of real effort is in the editing room, where you go like, okay, this is the moment we gotta keep in here. That's what it's always been for me. It's just been recording everything and then cutting out all the boring parts. Fishing, to take into the absolute extreme, is just IRL streaming. It's just Justin TV. And so that's exactly what I plan on doing. And I send my boys there and I get you 50,000 subscribers. It's actually not a good thing. It's actually not a good thing. And yeah. I know that you'll really, really want it. That's crazy. That That's exactly... It was, it was a real tough decision to get rid of my old channel. 17,000 subscribers. It's not a good thing because we've never cared about the actual number of like the fucking pixels that it says, oh, 50,000, that doesn't matter. What matters- Right, we have to get our, our value intrinsically rather than extrinsically. Then you go through like a bunch of this shit, like the dream result is that he wants to increase his SMB. So he wants to increase, look at this type of shit, bro. Look how detailed you can go into this. Content is valuable. If React content was so- Dude, this is like the most brutal video I've seen in this whole series. It's weird. It's not on his playlist. I just found it on his channel. I was like unsubscribed for a while. I just resubscribed because I don't want to miss another one of these. I haven't even seen this video, but I agree with everything he said in here. He should definitely add this video plus the Linus video. Like all the videos that relate to the React stuff, he should add all of that to the playlist, you know? If I, if I, we might do something with anime. We might do these like anime reactions, you know, like all the people that abuse copyright like that and then get mad at, at like the anime studios for copyright claiming them. We might do something like that, but if we do it, it's gonna be like 10 second clip of whatever happened just to show like that thing that happened with like in like the corner and then our faces. And then it's gonna be like a 10 minute long discussion uh, that we're like, what, what, what just happened? Debates back and forth, all that stuff, right? And it might be like 23 minute long episode and maybe two or three minutes are shown, but it, the video will be like an hour long. Spent no time on it. Why are 40,000 people sitting in Pokemane stream watching her? Watch stuff. Why are 70,000 people watching S- Hey bro, you, you really shouldn't, you really shouldn't do black tar heroin. Oh yeah? Well, why are so many people doing it? If black tar heroin was bad for you, then clearly all these people wouldn't be doing it. SQC react to a video. Why are people watching Danny Gonzalez- Terrible, harmful things. Hey bro, rest in peace to Live League. Good, because there are many terrible, horrible things in history that the majority have at least one point. I know, right? People love SAO, crazy. Over an hour, but it's a really good video. I have received substantial praise for that video. For example, Linus from Linus Tech Tips talked about how the video informed the policies that his company was taking towards that content. Also, not a single reactor has responded to it. Egotistical reactors will take <laughs> any- Damn, what a flex, that's crazy. Because reactors react, will react to anything. I mean, I'm kind of responding, but I mean, I like the videos, so. It never gets easier. The knowledge that there are so many people out there who believe false things about me and there's nothing I can do about it eats me up inside. I would like to say this past year was sufficient for me to get over all that stuff that happened a year ago, but I still have not. Being misrepresented and in many cases directly lied about, provably lied about, by so many people and having that accepted by so many is something that radically shifts your view of the world and other people. Damn, to a certain extent, this is this is his problem to deal with the no one else's. But I, I man, I'd never know what that's like. But you can obviously see how a person will come to view the world negatively when they realize that there is no consequences for the suffering that Gabri will cause. She will go on to this to countless people over her career and suffer nothing for doing so. Cause that- Right, right. And I saw the same thing with Moist Critical. I saw a lo long time before 
uh, this whole like drama thing with Moist Critical. I saw like Moist Critical literally just, I feel like he doesn't actually do half the things that he says he does, more than half. All the movies that he watches, all the video games that he plays, all that stuff. I feel like he has a team of people behind the scenes who tell him what to put in his videos, what opinions to have, and he just spouts it all out there. Because a lot of the things that he talks about, the things that I actually know quite a bit about, he just says a whole lot of nonsense. And then I see the kind of people that watch him regularly are not really all that like, it's not even that they're, they're you know, jacks of all trades. They're not even a jack of a single trade, let alone a master of any. It's like people who are vaguely aware of a few trades are the people that watch Moist Critical because he can speak in a way where it's just, he's amazing in the way that he talks. The wordplay that he has is like second to none, but the actual you know, the meat of what he's saying, the content of what he says, the opinions that he gives is really stupid, particularly on like political stuff and on like st the, the stuff that people do about like in, re in relation to freedoms that people have. Oh, this person should not be allowed to do this. This person, And he talks to their audience like they're idiots. He's like, this thing that this person did is obviously wrong. And you know, like, yeah, dude, if something is obvious, you don't need to point it out. He always sounds like he's overcompensating, like as if he doesn't understand morality and he has to see what other people think about it and go like, hey guys, isn't this thing so wrong that this person did? This thing is totally wrong, right? It's so bad that it's like, you might as well be Hitler at this point. Like the way that he talks is the way that an extremely, extremely uh, charismatic and compelling sociopath would talk. And I knew about this long before any of this drama, and I would mention it to people, but everyone loved him and everyone still loves him and nobody really notices. Those who have no care for accuracy and no care for others will obviously be able to sprint ahead of anyone that does. And they will receive nothing but rewards for doing so. Which is why I tend to just stay off places like Twitter and things like that. There are, uh, you know, I'm on YouTube a lot, but I go into YouTube knowing full well, I if I want to, you know, keep my sanity, I kind of have to stay off the recommended page. I should subscribe to people who I actually enjoy watching, and I should only watch things on my subscription page, which is what I do. I, it's like a habit now. The moment I hop on YouTube, it's immediate. My, my finger already went down there. I'm immediately at my subscriptions. And if I don't like what a person is doing, I unsubscribe and I don't watch them again. With Dark Viper, I unsubscribed, not because I don't like what he's doing, but because I'm just not interested in GTA 5 content. People to make the world a better place. But honestly, at this point, I don't think I'll ever be strong enough to do that. How do people who actually go out there and try to make the world better deal with people like Gabby? Selfish, dishonest liars who care about no one but themselves. Man, we could talk about that. Me, chat, I don't know if like Dark Viper, you would be down to talk about that. To say that someone actually cares about helping people is actually incredibly deep and incredibly loaded. And it's, it's, it's not such a simple statement to make. It would be extremely commendable if I found anyone that actually does like truly genuinely care about like being altruistic and hasn't been, you know, royally screwed by everyone around them. But there is a, there is a, an element of learning to enjoy the, the journey, learning to enjoy the process of just being helpful as opposed to actually the result of helping people. I heard this quote recently, it was like, um, if you love, if you think a flower is beautiful, don't pick it, it'll die. Just appreciate it from afar. And, and I think a lot of people will go like, okay, so I have to be smart along with being loving and, and not pick the flower. There's a way I believe to literally shift the way that you love because now flowers are no longer beautiful if you pick them to me. I think flowers and vases look ugly. Flowers and bouquet, bouquets and all this stuff, fake flowers, they all look ugly to me. A lot of people would consider them more beautiful and then they'd consider the flowers on the ground less beautiful and they'd go, but I have to restrain myself, I don't have to pick it. But I think there's literally a way to, to reshape your mind. But this is, I have to go meet with someone. This is, a deeper conversation. I'm not even scratching the surface though. Again, maybe I'm not really, you know, I, I know I'm not at the, at the level to really talk with, um, to really have this kind of discussion with him because this is, this is a next level kind of thing that I never have experienced, nor do I have any imagination of what it could be like, but I'd still would not mind having the discussion anyways. To some degree, I've become convinced that maybe the world can't get better. There's just a continuous cycle of things getting slowly better than slowly worse. For if, if I think things are not going to get better, but I think I can make the little world around me, the tiny little bubble around me better. I think that also hinges on me ignoring the whole like uh, trying to fix the world. Like there's the world and then there's my world. And, and it's, it's also a bit of a religious idea as well to go like, not only can you not influence the world that like, you know, whatever you want to call it, 
the collective will of humanity, God, nature, whatever word you want to apply is really what's in control of the world and that your influence over it will be all for naught. So you shouldn't worry about that because nothing lasts forever. You can build a sculpture, but eventually it'll come down. So there is that religious idea of like submitting and going like, I can't fix the world, so I should learn to stop caring. I, there's there's learning that you can't fix the world, and then for a, for a long while, it's just it's just depressing to think about. But then there's also a, a, a process of learning that it doesn't necessarily matter. The world will go on with or without you. And the, the morality of the world will shift, not based on what is actually genuinely moral to you or whatever, but based on what the world becomes. In the same way that like, you know, uh, a thousand years from now, the content marketplace will be so different, but it doesn't matter because it'll be dead. The world being being changed or made better or whatever is, I mean, you don't exist in these other places in the world with all these other 8 billion people. So you're basically dead to all these other people. And then you have to argue, okay, what is good? And then, and then it goes deep and you could go like, okay, is making content on YouTube even a good thing in the first place? Which is, it, it's, a, it's a rabbit hole and it branches out. And I'm nowhere near as, I shouldn't even say that. I shouldn't even say that. It's a bad mindset to have like, oh, I can't debate. I can't articulate. I can't like as well as another. No, if, if people want to have this kind of conversation, I'm so down to do it. But I need a little bit of time, like 30 seconds at least to formulate my responses, you know? I had these thoughts. It just, it's just a bit tricky for me to put them in words. I'm working on it. I'm getting better at it. But again, maybe my optimism is, is unfounded in the face of, you know, what he had to go through here. I don't know. I wouldn't know. And I, I would say that I'd love to know more about it, but honestly, I don't want to know what that's like. It's tough to say. Like the stoic idea of like, uh, you are responsible for the things that happen to you in your life. But I think the more I've started to adopt that philosophy, like the stoic philosophy, the more tolerant I've become of others to go like, they don't have to be stoics if I'm the stoic, because then I can bear the burden of these other people as well. Like if this kind of thing were to happen to me, then I would like to imagine that I'd be able to handle it perfectly fine and still be happy in the process, right? And still find meaning and all that stuff. And in the process of, of me becoming extremely strict to myself to say that like, okay, all of these things that I'm responsible for even though it may not appear like i'm responsible for it let me take responsibility for it in the process of becoming strict to myself i've become extremely tolerant with other people so i can't maybe i can't expect him to also be a stoic maybe i can't expect him to also be like hey you brought this on yourself right even if you didn't you you act like it you take it upon yourself you embrace it and and you power through it regardless, you know? Because I don't know what that's like. It really is like the ancient philosophers used to say, man, happiness is luck. Happiness straight up is luck. It's not luck in the way that you actually are lucky. It's lucky in the way that you feel lucky. You know, it's gratefulness. It's I'm lucky I have two arms and two legs and two eyes and two nostrils and two rows of teeth and two parents and like, oh, I'm, I'm lucky I have all these things. A lot of people only have one. A lot of people have zero. And a lot of people feel like, man, I'm... I'm so upset because I don't have, you know, $10,000 a month coming in or something like that. It's like, man, uh, I'm, I'm lucky to have $1,000 in the bank, not even income, just like just money just to have like as an emergency fund. I'm lucky to have that. And I don't know what this kind of thing would do to your to do to your mental, you know, this is something that I, I'd be so down to dive in deeper in what he just said, not the rest of the react stuff. That's I think that's like settled and done. But like the whole idea of like, is it even worth helping people? Does that bring you happiness? Is it, is it a goal worth pursuing? You know, that's an incredibly deep topic. And I mean, if anyone wants to talk about that, I'm, I'm game. Forever. But maybe I just want to emotionally believe that so I can justify my cowardice for not being able to face terrible people like Gabby more often. From someone who does the shit that he does, like the pacifist percent and all that stuff, like brutal, brutal work. I mean, not, he's not like working in the fucking coal mines or anything, but he definitely does not need to do half the stuff he does on YouTube, but he does it anyways. Part of his motivation for doing YouTube, at least like, at least 50% of his motivation for doing YouTube is because he genuinely enjoys the content and the community that comes with it, not necessarily the money. That's at least 50% of his motivation. I believe it. So it's like to, to have that as a premise, which you may not have to believe, but I, if I believe that premise and then he goes like, Maybe it's my own inability to confront my cowardice. Like, damn, bro. I don't want to experience what he went through. 
thank you for watching. Sorry this video is not as substantive or as well argued as the actual video that I made on the top. No, this was a damn good video, bro. This was like the most like brutal, you know, breakdown, like beat down of, of anyone. Man, I've seen in a while on YouTube, actually. I don't know why this was the most replayed part. I feel like the part where he, he flexed on him, like there have been zero responses to me. I feel like that should have been the most replayed part. Any respectable person's goal is save the world, right? I don't, I don't know if that's a, a really good goal or not at this point. Can I actually just save the world? The answer is no. So that means the first step is gain power. That's reasonable. That's right. He's, he's got the mindset for it. The, the cake is a lie. Wait. I get that this is like a joke, but there's actually some real, um, like, depth like, there's some depth here, actually. There's something to be learned from what he's doing. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's actually that important to learn it. But there is something to be learned. Okay, I think I've wrote down enough. I think I have a pretty decent strategy on making it.